Welcome to the second, the second round of talks to in EuroPython. I hope everyone is having fun. Oh, we have a very full room. So this is Ram Aracham. I'm really sorry I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So tell us, where are you streaming from? Hi, I, I'm coming from Tel Aviv, Israel. Cool, cool. How's the weather there? Uh, it's as hot as always. So Ram, please, the floor is yours. Take it away. Sure. Hi, everybody. Let me share my screen. Uh, welcome to my talk. This is going to be a music-oriented uh, talk. Uh, it's going to be a talk about uh, live coding a music synthesizer. Uh, so this is going to be a live coding talk, meaning I'm, I'm going to write code live. I'm going to explain what I'm doing. And I'm going to show some things about music theory. Uh, I'll give you some backstory for this talk. Uh, when I was 17, I wanted to learn to play bass guitar. Uh, I got my bass guitar right here. I'm going to show some stuff on it later. And I, I got myself a teacher to teach me how to play gas, bass guitar. And uh, he taught me, and he also taught, taught me something interesting called overtones or harmonics. Um, so that, that was, was when I was 17. A couple of years back, I remembered what he taught me about overtones. And I thought, can I take that and use Python to make uh, sounds that sound like a musical instrument using math? So I tried that a couple of years ago. And it worked and it blew my mind. So I figured I'm gonna do the same thing in front of an audience and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing and I'm gonna blow your minds. So that's the story of this talk. All the code for this talk is in the GitHub report you can see here. And every commit there is a step that I'm gonna do here. A little bit about myself before I start. My name is Ram Rahum. I'm a long time Python developer. Many people know me by my projects, my open source projects, PySnooper and Python Turtle. I'm a contributor in a bunch of big projects like CPython, Django, PyPy, Matplotlib, and a bunch of other projects. I organized the Israeli Python community, and I quit my job a few months ago. I'm looking to move to Europe, maybe Germany. If you have interesting job offers, please talk to me. So let's get started. The final goal for this talk would be to make a Python program that plays a musical piece. And we're gonna get there step by step. I'm gonna explain each step as we go forward. The last goal is to play the musical piece. We're going to start with playing the simplest possible note. We're going to make it sound good. We're going to make the code elegant. We'll play a bunch of notes. We'll play different notes. We'll play lots of notes. We'll play notes real fast. And the very last step would be to play a musical piece. The first step would be to play a note. And we're going to need some kind of sound library for Python. So I found one called Sound Device. It's got a GitHub page. Is the text clear on the browser? Yes, I can see everything. It, it has documentation, right? You import sound device and just run sounddevice.play and you give it a NumPy array with your sound data. First, first, you know, I'll explain something about sound waves. Here is the simplest possible sound wave, right? This is a sine wave, air pressure over time, right? Air pressure is oscillating over time. So that's what we're gonna try to do in Python. Uh, feel free to ask me questions during the talk. Just send them in chat and our session chair is gonna read them to me. Uh, I'm gonna import math. I'm gonna need to do some math stuff. Import sound device. I'm gonna use NumPy. And I'm gonna use matplotlib to plot my, my wave. Okay. Here is the simplest possible sign function. Now, I want to add mu music related stuff to it. So I want to add a volume to it so I can control the volume. And I want to be able to determine the pitch, the frequency of the sound. Let's, let's write down numbers for these values. I'm gonna use 440 Hertz, which is an A note. I'm going to do a duration for the sound of two seconds. And I'm going to do a sample rate of 8,000. Sample rate is like a resolution for the sound. It determines how many sound uh, data points per second. I'm going to put all that in, in a nice sign function. And now I want to plot it and I want to play it. But before I can do that, I, I said that 
that uh, the wave is a wave of air pressure over time. So I'm going to have to create a NumPy array for the time and a NumPy array for the air pressure. So let's do that. The time array is just the simplest linear array. And the pressure array is a bit more complicated. I'm going to go over each point in the time array, and I'm, I'm going to calculate the pressure for that time point. And, and I'm going to populate the pressure array that way. Let's plot it to see whether it looks good. OK, this is our sound wave. So far, so good. Let's try playing it. We have the simplest possible load. Let's listen again. Okay, so we did task number one, play a note. The next task is to make it sound good, right? Right now, this sounds kind of sounds more like a dial tone than a musical instrument, right? Yeah, our, our goal is to make that sound sound just a little bit more like this. Right, so now we're compar comparing these two sounds. We want this to sound like this. Okay, F first difference you might notice is that the volume for the computer generated sound is constant. While the volume for the guitar starts off as loud and then becomes gradually more quiet. So uh, we can implement that in Python. That's called exponential decay. So I'm just gonna add a figure for the volume. And I'm gonna use uh, the formula for exponential decay. It requires one constant, half-life. Half-life meaning how many seconds it takes for the volume to become half of what it was. So I'm gonna use 0.3 seconds. Okay, let's listen to that. Okay, this is better. Now it's kind of sounding like a cheap organ. And now I want to take it to the next level. Okay, still this sound doesn't sound as warm as this sound. Right? So what is, what is the magic in this sound? I'm, I'm gonna try to explain that. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you something about music theory, something called overtones. Uh, but, but first I'll give you a refresher on, on frequency and pitch of, of sounds. Let's say I'm playing a string. So string is making a sound uh, with a fr frequency x or a pitch x and that is determined by a few things the density of the string the tension of the string which is determined by the tuning pegs and the length of the string which is the only thing i can actually change if i play an open note i get x but if, if i press on the frets I'm, I'm making the effective length shorter so i'm getting a higher frequency if i'm if i'm pressing on this fret this fret is just at the middle, so I'm making the effective length half of what it was. So the frequency is 2x, so I'm getting a note that's one octave above um, the original note. 
Okay, so far that's what most people uh, know about uh, strings and music. Now I'll show you something called overtones. So I'm gonna show you a trick I can do. I'm, I'm taking my finger and I'm putting it on this string and I'm plucking it. And it's making an interesting sound. Now I, I, haven't, I haven't pressed on the fret like I'm playing. I just really lightly touched it while, while I was plucking. And I can even let it, let it go and it keeps on going. And I can do this trick only in a in number of positions. I can't do it here won't work, I can do it here, and here, and here, and here. I, I can only do it in a few special locations. So what makes these locations special? What are these sounds? And what does that have to do with making a realistic sounding sound? These sounds are overtones and these special locations, th this one it divides a string to two equal parts. This spot, divides the string into three equal parts, one, two, three. This spot divides the string into four equal parts, one, two, three, four, uh, et cetera. And, and wh when I'm putting my finger here, for example, I'm, I'm forcing the string, because my finger is uh, chubby and fluffy, when I touch the string, it can't move at this location. So when I pluck it, it's making one wave here and another wave here and these are opposite waves. So the, the effective length of the string would be one half. So the frequency is two X. And if I do the same trick here at the third point, I'm dividing the string to three equal parts, getting three opposite waves, and the, effect, the effective length is one third. So the pitch is three X. So X, two X over tone number two, three X over tone number three, four X over tone number four, and so on, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so th that's a nice trick, but what does that have to do with making a sound that sounds realistic? When I play these overtones now, I isolated them, which means I'm, I played just them without anything else. Because when you play any regular note, like this note, you're not playing just X, you're not playing just the bass frequency. All the overtones are actually in each and every note. So when I'm playing any note like this, it has trace amounts of this and this and this and these. They are all mixed in together to one note. Uh, people who are more musically inclined, when I play this, they hear traces of this. Uh, personally, I, I don't have that kind of hearing. I, I can't hear this inside of this, but but this cocktail of overtones is what gives uh, the note its character. And it, it also explains why some notes sound good together and some, some don't. For example, let's say I take these two notes. Uh, each of these come with their own set of overtones. Um, so it just so happens that overtone number three of the first note is almost identical to overtone number two of the second note. They're almost identical, so they sound really good together because their overtones kind of mesh together. And if I were to take two notes that don't have meshing overtones, like, like these notes, they will sound terrible together. So uh, overtones are responsible for a lot of what we feel when we hear music. Okay, so far that's interesting. Now we can just take everything that I explained to you and implement it in Python. These overtones, they are just sine waves, sine wave, waves with different frequency, x, 2x, 3x, 4x. We can just have a Python loop that just goes over all of them, adds them together, and let's see what happens. I'm gonna go on a loop from one to eight. And I'm gonna add a wave for each iteration. Okay, and I'm multiplying by i here and the, the i has a job of being the one x, two x, three x. So the i is the overtone number. Let's say uh, plot this wave.
Okay, this is an interesting looking wave, right? I'm not sure what to do with this information, but let's listen to it. Okay, this is an interesting sounding sound. Let's listen to it again. Uh, this to me kind of, it kind of reminds me of a, a guitar on distortion, like an electric guitar with a distortion pedal. Uh, why does this sound distorted? Th there was something you might have noticed when I was uh, playing the bass earlier, when I was showing the overtones, something I didn't account for in my Python code. So I'm gonna play the overtones again and I'm gonna see whether you notice. Okay, here are the overtones again. So yeah, they start off as loud and they become more quiet as I go higher up, right? This one's pretty loud. So is this one. But then they really get quiet, right? So it seems that the volume should be lower. Uh, I mean, the higher we go with, with the overtone, the lower the volume should be. So let's add that logic in Python. Instead of having just a range for the, the overtones, I'm gonna have a dict. And I found that, that this expression is a good one. One over i to the power of one and a half. I found it, I found it gives the best sound. Okay, so the change I made here is that from, from now on, every overtone has its own, own volume that I use to multiply. Okay, this is what the wave look like, looks like. Kind of, a, kind of a steep ascend. I don't know what to think about that. And let's listen to what it sounds like. Okay, this is much better, right? This, it kind of sounds like a cheap piano. Uh, so this is our sound and I'm happy with it. So we, f we finish the task of making the sound sound good. Uh, let's listen again. Now uh, you might be asking yourself, why does this sound specifically like a piano and why doesn't it sound like a guitar or like, I don't know, a violin or a saxophone or any other instrument? The answer is I have no idea. I just randomly tried stuff. It ended up sound sounding like a piano. I was happy with that. One more thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lower the volume because we're gonna play a bunch of notes. That's uh, still audible, right? Yes. Cool. Next thing I wanna do, we're gonna do a lot more complicated stuff, but I wanna make the code elegant so I could work with it. Uh, I wanna take all of this code and put it in classes. I'm not gonna write too much new code, I'm just gonna take the functions and put them in a class. Uh, I want the end result to look like this. I wanna be able to create a note with a certain frequency and play it. So I'm gonna make a note class. And that's gonna take a frequency, a volume, and it's gonna have a length. Let's say each note has a length of one and a half seconds, just to keep it simple. This sign function is just gonna be the pressure method for this note. The frequency wouldn't be a constant anymore and neither will the du duration or the sample rate. I'm gonna take the code that, that plays the note and I'm just gonna put it in, in a play method.
Okay, I got my play method, and I've got my get pressure method. I've got my constructor. Let's see whether this code works. Of course it doesn't. I forgot to change from sign to get pressure. Let's try again. Okay, same sound as before, right? Just now it's with classes, now it's easier to work with. So our code is now more elegant. Next, next task, I wanna play a bunch of notes, right? So far we've played just one note. Our final goal would, would, would be to play a full musical piece. So we're gonna have to play a sequence of notes one after the other. Let's say that, that the interface would look like this. I'm gonna create a sequence of notes for each note I have to include the note itself and the time offset. So here is an example of a sequence I might make. Five notes, 0.2 seconds between each note, and it's the same note just over and over again. So I'm gonna have to create a class sequence and it's gonna take a list of members. And I'm gonna have to figure out the length of the sequence. And that's just gonna be the very last member. That's just gonna be the, be the very last note, the length of the very last note. And I'm going to create a get pressure method for this sequence. I'm going to make them share a base class. They are both going to be subclasses of audio. And I'm going to move the play method to the base class. So you could play both a note and a sequence. I've got my sequence, and how do I calculate the air pressure of the sequence? Just add up all the notes taking the offset into account. So it's gonna look like this. Um, let's see whether that works. Great, I got five notes playing in a row. I got a bunch of notes. Let's see how I am on time. Okay, I'm doing great on time. If there are questions, feel free to send them. No questions, just chat, but awesome talk. Thank you. Uh, my next task is to play different notes, right? So far we've played the same note five times. I wanna play different notes, different pitches. So I'm gonna show you the formula for that. I'm gonna play it and then I'm gonna explain it. Okay, so now we have notes of different pitches. Let's listen again. You must be wondering why, I mean, what is this? Why am I multiplying by two, raising to the power of something over 12? So I'm gonna explain. Um, the reason we're raising two to the power of something is because the musical scale is a log logarithmic scale. Uh, what is it with a 12, right? Why do we have zero over 12 or four over 12 or seven over 12? That's because uh, this octave is divided to 12 semitones. There are 12 frets between X and 2X. So that explains this math. And now we have different notes. Uh, the next task is to play lots of notes. We're gonna play a musical piece. It's gonna have maybe a thousand notes. We need to be sure that our program can handle a thousand notes. Uh, so let's start with just a hundred notes. I'm gonna do a generator expression. I'm gonna do random pitches. I'm gonna use Python's random module. I'm gonna choose a random note. And I'm gonna play a hundred of these notes in intervals of 0.3 seconds between them. Okay, let's listen to that. Now we have a problem. I press play. I asked the program to start playing, but it's not playing. It's not playing because I gave it a hundred notes to play and it needs to calculate all of that data 
uh, before it can play it because it's, it's a lot of data. It's now going to wait a long time before it can play that. Uh, so we want to fix that. We want to be able to play immediately. And the way we're going to do that is streaming. We're going to play while it is calculating. Let's go to the play method. We initialize the pressure array. We fill it up with data and then we played it. So I'm going to make a small change. I'm going to initialize it. Then I'm going to start playing it on a separate thread. And then I'm going to calculate it. So the calculation is going to be going on while sound device is playing the, the music in a separate thread. So let's try that. And from now on, I'll be using Python on the shell rather than my debugger. OK, that works. Now it's going to play 100 notes. So I'm going to stop that. OK, this task is over. We're almost done. Uh, now we want to play notes real fast. Uh, why is that a challenge? Let's see. Instead of 0.3 seconds between each two notes, I'm going to do 0.08 seconds. OK, did you just hear it stop abruptly? Right? I'm going to make it even faster. It stopped abruptly. Why did it stop abruptly? Because I was giving it so much work to do. It can't calculate as fast as it plays. If I wanted to fix this, I would have to make the code more performant, faster. I would have to optimize it to go over the code, five places where I could do things faster, and then improve them. I don't have time for that at all. I want a solution that's going to just make everything faster without me having to think about it at all. Can anyone guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to use PyPy instead of Python. Right? It didn't stop. PyPy is an alternative implementation of Python, second alternative to CPython. It is fa faster. They use alien technology from the future to make Python uh, maybe three or four times faster than CPython. So if, if you're not familiar with it, it's an amazing project. Check it out. It can just magically make things faster. So now, now our code can play notes real fast. The, the last step would be to play a musical piece. So far, when we've given our code notes to play, we've just given them manually, just a list of notes and offsets. And there is already an established format for giving a list of notes and offsets. And that is called MIDI. Yeah, so I got myself a MIDI file. And I got a, a library called MIDO for Python that can open MIDI files. So let's play, play around with that and see what it looks like. I'm importing MIDO. And I'm going to open my MIDI file. It's a MIDI file of type one, whatever that is. It has two tracks, whatever these are, and 561 messages. Uh, I can put it in the tuple and I, and I can look at the messages. Let's look at the first 10 messages. Okay, there seems seem to be all kinds of metadata messages here. There's a time signature, key signature, a tempo, a track name. Um, let's look at the middle of the file. Here we see more interesting messages. There are note on and note off messages. And the, the messages, let's look at the note on messages. They give us the pitch of the sound, which is the, the note equals 60 part. They give us the volume, which is the, which they call velocity in MIDI language. And they give the time, which is how long the note is playing. We're gonna write code that goes over these messages, reads them one by one and creates notes for them and then plays them using our synthesizer. I want the API to look like this. I want to create a MIDI sequence and then play it. And I'm going to do MIDI sequence as a subclass of sequence. It's getting a MIDI path. And now we want to read this MIDI path. And we're going to go over the messages in, in this MIDI file. And we're going to add members. We're, we're going to have a list of members. We're going to add members. They're going to have a, a, 
time offset. And there's gonna be a note with a frequency and the volume. And when we're done creating these members, we're just gonna initialize the sequence with the members. Let's look at these messages again. We've got a note on and note off messages, and we got all these control change messages, and I don't know what these do. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore all the messages that aren't note on. And now my challenge is to fill out these question marks. I gotta figure out the time offset, gotta figure out the frequency, gotta figure out the volume. Um, the volume is easy. The message has a, what they call a velocity, and the velocity is a number between zero and 100, 127. So I'm just gonna normalize it to be between zero and one. Next up is the pitch. And the pitch, I'm gonna do similar expression to what we did earlier. They have a certain base note that they, they use, minus six to one, if I remember correctly. And the last thing to figure out is the time offset. So they've got, for each note, they've got the amount of time that it takes. But we need to make an offset out of that. So we have to make a tally of all the time offsets that we've had so far. We're gonna initialize it at zero. And we're gonna add to it every time we see a time offset. And we're gonna use that for the current time. I'm gonna use first just the first five members to see whether this even works. And let's try playing it. Okay, I got a bug. All right, forgot to make a tuple. Now let's play the entire piece. Hey, this is the code. We have just 79 Python lines, including blank lines, and we have a full synthesizer that creates sounds and read MIDI files. Um, all the code that I, I've written is in this repo, github.com, a Python synthesizer. So check it out. If you have any questions, it looks like I have around three minutes to spare. So feel free to ask any, any questions. I, I don't even know what to say. Like I wish I had my I wish I had my claps set up right now. Like this was incredible. When you get out of here at the Zoom room and you get into Discord, you're gonna see we're talking all the way through it. It was um, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, well, I have I saved one question for you. That seems like everyone wants to know what are on those sheets of paper. Uh, all the code. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I practice this like a hundred times. You, can, you, you can't do a 45 minute live coding session without practicing it a hundred times. No, so that's the secret for yeah. everyone that was asking then. <laughs> Wonderful. That was really, really, really cool. Like everyone is that, jaws are dropped everywhere. Thank you. Thank yeah, uh, you. know, and I'll answer one question that I do get asked a lot when I give this talk. Lots of people ask me, what is this editor? because most okay. people don't know it. So this is called Wing ID. You know, most people are familiar with PyCharm. So that's like, that's like a different brand of PyCharm. It's a nice ID, got lots of automation on it. So if you were wondering how I'm moving so fast and doing all this automation, that's Wing ID. It's a really nice ID and I recommend it. Cool, well, thank you for that. And then Matthew is saying, well, awesome talk. And then a minor comment. Um, he's saying that he thinks you could vectorize the calculation of the pressure instead of um, doing it in a for loop. Uh, using use, using mapi.vectorize, I used to do that. The problem is uh, you can't stream when you're doing that because vectorize doesn't let you access the array as it, it is getting built. I was actually spending lots of time trying to find a good solution to that. Perfect, so you thought about it beforehand. Uh, so Vinayak is asking, are there any gotchas to run all this on Linux? On Linux, uh, I, th I think there is like one more thing you have to add. You have to add a delay. 
before it starts playing because the timing is different between Windows and Linux. So you have to add like one line for delay. And I, I actually, in, in the code for this talk, I, I added it as an optional commit. I'm gonna show it to you. Where are the commits? And so the repo has the code commit by commit. So you can see all the steps that I do. And I did one commit that adds a delay that makes it work on, on Linux. Right, so this is his commit and, it's, and it just adds a delay just before it starts playing. Perfect, well, thank you for that. And yeah, I have a question actually that we had like 30 seconds left. What, uh, how long did it take for you to prepare this talk? Oh, I mean, I've given it in a couple of, of conferences before. I, I've spent, uh, I've spent way more time than I'd like to admit. <laughs> Make it this time. Okay, I, I won't I won't force you to tell me that. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you so well, much, Ram. It was incredible. It was one of the best talks I've ever seen. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody. And enjoy the rest of the conference. And thank, thank you, Lace, for sharing this session. My pleasure. Absolutely.